It's a short, short called Signified. Signified. Because words are about desire, and desire is about the guy who filled my two front tires when one was low. And desire is about the guy who cleaned my windshield as the other crouched below me, filled. And there's the guy who pours foam onto my coffee in the shape of a heart, and I, each time he pours so slow, think Jesus. Because the guy who pours the foam in the shape of a heart is 24, and I am not 24, meaning I am not 34, and don't think much of 24, except to think I must have been working through something back then, living in that railroad apartment in Baltimore, daydreaming of fame and what all came with fame. My friends that year said, why move? But I packed some boxes, crammed the boxes into the car, pushed the couch over the porch. My friends waved from the couch in the rearview mirror, and I forgot them once I reached the highway. Why Boston, they wanted to know. Because why not? Or because I imagined Boston as brick-walked and lamplit, and I could see myself tromping in boots through the snow. Or because I imagined a field from a poem I'd read in school as a child. Or because I had no good answer to why Baltimore. Because I'd gotten held up, a knife point pointing to my face. All this to say that I remember those friends from then, sitting here now on my new couch, 12 years past. Their tattoos I remember of Gothic letters and Celtic, Celtic knotwork, their tangled hair. All this to say that I've made a connection, forced as it seems, of 24 to 24. I've made a connection of couch to couch. Connections are easy when one is sitting, staring at a wall. There is no deeper meaning. There is no signified. There is couch and there is couch. There is a table my feet are on and the table from then, a table we sat at until the pale hum of morning. There was no such word then as after party. There was no such use of the word random then, how the kids these days use random. What I mean is the guy who filled my tires looked up and said of the lowness in one tire and not in the other, random. And I, remembering running into a curb the night before, driving home from a bar where I sat and sat until giving up, thought, not really. And the guy who cleaned the windshield whistled and walked back to the garage. And the guy who pours the foam into the shape of a heart told my friend of me she is hot when my friend went to the cafe once alone. Your friend, he said, she is hot, and my friend called later to tell me the news. What was I doing that night? Same thing as this night. Drinking wine, sitting on the couch, my feet up on the table. These are the cliched years, these years. The details have been predetermined. It's a recipe I follow. Very little this, very little that. I think I said that's cute because that's what one says in this situation. One laughs and says cute. And one's friend says in this situation you should go for it, which always seems to mean, mean to me that I should go against something else. I said, how old is he? Then I said, that's cute. Then I said, I'm 12 years older. And my friend, exhaling smoke for emphasis, said, exactly. In Baltimore, everyone was going for everyone else, small town, junkies. We were all the same age, the 20-somethings, the 50-somethings. When the bars closed, we went to the place that stayed open until morning, club midnight, and we drank orange drinks until things felt unreasonable. What was the point of reason? I had no desire for reason. I had only a weak desire, in the words of my shrink from then, to fill a space, and I filled the space. There's a list somewhere of the drugs I did. There's a list somewhere of who I fucked. I wrote these lists on the backs of napkins a night at Club Midnight, and everyone thought the lists were too short. Well, that was years ago, and things have changed. And there's a list of the drugs I almost did, and a list of the guys I almost fucked, and those lists, believe me, another story. So I sat the other night in a bar on a snowy lamplit street until I realized he, the one I am supposed to desire, 36, a neat haircut, small hands, a tucked in shirt, a workhorse, a perfect match, wasn't going to show. Or I realized that he would show and that I would feel disgust. So I stumbled to the car, ended up half the car on the sidewalk, no one around to see it. I once knew better than to drive. I mean, I once considered other options. There were no windows in Club Midnight. We knew it was morning because of sudden blue shadows under our eyes. And that shock of light, no matter how pale, when someone opened the door. And the shock of the cold, Jesus. There's no good story to tell except once I decided to wait for the bus. My friends had gone and I was too sick from drink after drink to drive. Birds were chirping and I wondered where from. There were no trees. There was nowhere to hide. The man with the knife had a scar on his face and I didn't want a scar on my face. 
I reached into my pocket, pulled out some ones, and he ran one way, I the other. And here I am watching the blue turn darker blue behind the trees. And the color of this couch, according to the catalog, is mushroom, which means I paid a lot for it. One must pay up when one has a recipe, a list of ingredients, a predestined life, and one ingredient is a costly couch, and one is a car, and one is a man, and one is a child. The men who carried up the couch were older, no nonsense, beer bellied, and smelling of sweat. Though had the room been darker, smokier, the bartender filling and filling, the music up high, well, perhaps there'd be something more to say. The guy filling my tires when I tried to hand him a few ones said no. He said, Jesus lady, air is free. And the guy in the cafe, well, each time I drop 50 cents into the tip jar, lift my cup, say thank you into the disintegrating heart, never looking up, though I can feel him looking down. And my friend who always smells like smoke, did I say this and it's comforting somehow, will say all, oh, a heart, look, a heart. And my friend and I will sit on chairs on the sidewalk out front, even in cold, and a bus will pass, and the bell on the door will jingle. And the guy will come out, wiping his hands on his pants, lighting a cigarette he pulls from a pale blue box, blowing white smoke into the sky. And I imagine he's looking at someone else. And I remember my predestined life, my list of ingredients, and one is a man, and one is a child, and one is a child. And I imagine he's looking only at me. And I imagine the bell sound comes from a horse stopped in the snow at the edge of the woods. Thanks. <laughs>